So I have had a long journey with fear over my life, and the two of us have really gotten to know each other pretty well. And it started when I was a kid. I grew up in Arizona, in a town on the border of Mexico and California, and needless to say, it was probably one of the hottest places on earth. And as kids, we spent a ton of time in the pool, just trying to stay cool and beat the heat. And one of the favorite games that we would play was called the rocket. And the goal of the rocket was, to launch yourself as high and as far as you could off the high dive. Well, uh, it was a very fun game, except I never went up on that high dive. Uh, my job was to give out the points to all, the, all my friends who did the craziest jumps and sit on the side of the pool and cheer them on. But what I was really doing was actually covering up the fact that I was petrified to get up on that board. And my friends never knew it. But what was really killing me was I was missing out on all the fun that they were having. And at that point, I realized that I had done that quite a bit as a, you know, a young guy. And, and there were a lot of times in my life where I had chosen to just sit by the side and had missed out on a lot of things. And so at that point, I realized that I needed to try and live my life being fearless, not being afraid of anything. And that's what I tried. That's what I did. So growing up, getting into college, I had this incredible optimism and confidence getting through college. I started my career right out of school uh, at 22 years old, and my outlook on things was, was just, everything was fun. I could take on any challenge I wanted and accomplish. I started in advertising for a beer company. It was the greatest job I'd ever had. And what I realized is it opened doors, it helped me succeed, it got me promoted, it just made the work fun, having that outlook. But what it also did was make me think that I couldn't do anything wrong. And then I started doing things wrong. And I had these decisions that I was making that had consequences. And those consequences were showing me how quickly good stuff could be taken away and how quickly fear could set in. And the biggest shift in my career was when I started my first company. I had been watching the trends in the growing and aging population and I had been watching how incredibly big the, the beauty market was, beauty products, consumer packaged goods. So I said, if Procter & Gamble can do it, then I should be able to do it too. So I started a skincare company. And I had taken loans from friends and family. I would asked favors of even more people. And we did the R&D, had the products designed and manufactured. We got them in the warehouse. And then I sat back and thought, I built this thing up. Let's watch it grow. And it didn't. The products never sold. We couldn't get them in the stores. Pretty soon those products started to expire. I lost all the money, went bankrupt, on the edge of foreclosure. And that's when the fear hit and it took hold and it wouldn't go away. And that's how I lived my life moving forward. The, the fear turned into panic, day and night, nonstop. Couldn't sleep, couldn't make decisions, couldn't think straight. And I started to be the person that I never imagined I would become, but I was the guy who always pointed out what was wrong. I was the guy in meetings who couldn't hear what was being discussed because all I was doing was trying to think of, why is this going to fail? Why is it a bad idea? And let me be the one to tell you why I think that's true. So I became the pessimist. I became the cynic and the naysayer. And in normal day-to-day -day conversations, talking to people, I had really no idea what was being talked about because all I could do was point out why they were wrong or in my head what was going to fail about what we were talking about. And pretty soon I got a wake-up call from my business partner who happens to also be my best friend, luckily. Uh, he said, my outlook on life was really affecting our business and it could actually be the one thing that brought it down and made it crumble. And he gave me two choices. He said, I could either walk away from the business and he'd buy out my share or I could figure out what was going on and fix it. Didn't want to let him down, and I also didn't want to walk away from a business that we had we'd built together. So my first reaction was, my first reaction was that I'm just going to do what I had done before and push it aside. I could ignore it, I could act like I wasn't scared, and I'd move on with my life. And it didn't work very well. 
fear actually got even worse and panic even stronger. And the only other thing I thought that might help is if I could understand it a little bit. And so I spent quite a long time just starting to look into what causes fear, what causes anxiety, and I found some interesting things that really helped me. One of which was just the basics, that, that fear is a chain reaction in your brain that is triggered by some kind of stressful event or stressful trigger. And, you know, we have, humans have this instinct, most animals do, and it served us very well, the fight or flight response is, you know, everybody has heard about that. But what I learned is that as soon as you get that trigger, the fear trigger, and it sets in, your body gives off 30 different hormones to get your body ready to handle this if you decide not to flee. Uh, if you're going to, um, you know, if you're going to choose the fight or flight, whichever one, your body goes through some incredible things, which is your heart rate, your blood pressure increase, your digestion and your immune system actually decrease to give you more energy to deal with the threat. And you lose the ability to focus on small tasks so that your brain can look at the big picture and see if there are other threats that are going to be coming at you. So all very useful if there's a real threat in front of you, right? If somebody's breaking into your house or you're up on mountains and, you know, mountain lion or a bear or something's right in front of you. But what's interesting and what I learned is that humans are the only animal that have sometimes this unfortunate gift of anticipation. So where there's unknown, our brains fill in what we think might happen. And those might happen moments cause the same trigger and the same hormones to release as if you were standing in front of a wild animal. So clearly fight or flight is useful if you've got something in front of you as a threat, but not very useful for somebody like me coming out here about to come out on stage and talk to a big group and be going through all of those same physical, physical reactions. And what I noticed was that, that these things um, are all part of the feararchy or the fear hierarchy. And this to me was, was amazing because of all these hundreds and sometimes thousands of fears that I'd created over the years, we're all programmed for everything to fit in these five little buckets. And to me, that was incredibly simple and not overwhelming, which was a big part of what was causing fear. I was, I was having fear of being scared. <laughs> Try and figure that one out. <laughs> Try and fix that. The loss of, or the uh, fear of extinction. Fear of extinction is the fear of death. Most humans have this as a core fear. Uh, this is why you, when you almost get into a car accident or um, you're standing at the edge, you know, even looking down uh, over, a, over a big building or over a cliff, you get that feeling, your adrenaline, and you, you, know, you have that fear because that's, that's a core fear of ours. Fear of mutilation. This is anything that can affect our bodies. So for those of you who are scared of snakes or insects, for me, spiders, uh, that's where this comes from. The third one, loss of autonomy. This is being overwhelmed or controlled by the circumstances around you, your environment. So this is where claustrophobia fits in, but this is also where in social situations, you can get so overwhelmed by the people, the noise, the smells, everything around you that you shut down or you panic. And a lot of times you leave. Separation, loss of separation. This is rejection. This is where the fear of being not needed comes from. And this is why the silent treatment is so painful if you're on the receiving end. And last but not least is the fear of ego death. This is humiliation. This is uh, shame. This is the shattering of your feeling of worthiness. And this is where the fear of failure fits. And what was amazing to me is that I realized we spend most of our days creating these fears, manufacturing these things at the top of the pyramid. Things that we're creating about ourselves, that we're not good enough to do this, or smart enough, or old enough to do that, or not rich enough to do something else. All at the top. Instead of focusing where you would think you should be focusing, which is keeping your body safe and staying alive, right? And what was amazing to me was by, by seeing this and you know, just learning about the fight or flight, even uh, just the basics, is that I knew that if I had the courage to just break down my fears and see where they fit in that pyramid, that it made a huge difference in how I reacted when I got scared to things. So asking myself things like, what are the chances of this actually happening? Coming out on stage and being convinced that I'm gonna vomit all over, the, all over the floor. Probably not very likely, but I can convince myself that it's gonna happen. This, you know, so working through those kinds of things to think, 
if it does happen, could I deal with it? You know, is it going to be that bad? And a lot of the times what I would do would just try and recognize that there's fear and set it to the side and try and take one more step into what I was doing. And that is one of the scariest and hardest things to do. But what I realized is that there were a lot of good things on the other side of fear. Things, you know, the difference between success or failure or love or loneliness or, you know, joy or, or pain. And to me, looking at success, love, and joy seemed like the good side to choose of being on from fear. And so I remind myself of a, of a quote. It's not from Einstein or anybody, you know, that big, but it's of a, a, a woman named Bethany Hamilton. And she's a surfer who lost her arm in a shark attack and became, later became a pro surfer. And something that she said was, going through what she did, courage is not that you don't get afraid. Courage is that you don't let the fear stop you. And so learning what I'd learned by looking through everything and things like that of being reminded, once I accepted the fact that I couldn't ignore fear, I tried that, didn't work. I couldn't let fear take over, that wasn't very productive. And so what I realized is I had to live a life that was with fear. I had to work through it. I had to have it right by my side because I was not going to be able to get rid of it. And that's when some really incredible things started happening that I would have thought were impossible. One of which is owning a marketing agency that a lot of people said the business model wasn't going to work. Four years into it, we are leading and started the first ever brand for the state of Colorado or starting the first co-working space downtown, which opened doors for me to own a piece of a new tech accelerator that's disrupting the ad industry. And so one thing I, I really want to share with everybody here and ask you guys is think about what have you missed just because you were scared? And what might you miss tonight, years coming, years, years coming up that you might miss because you don't know what's on the other side, but you choose not to move forward. It took me 25 years to get up on the diving board. I did finally get up there. Not until I had a family, a wife and kids, two little kids, and we were at the pool together. And my kids, little kids, said, Daddy, Daddy, we want to see you up high. We want, we want to see you up on the board. So <laughs> just like I couldn't let down my business partner, I could not let down my little kids. So I climbed up step by step, 14 of them, exactly. <laughs> And I'm on the top of this high dive and I look down and all I see are these two incredibly happy, proud faces looking up at their dad. They had never seen that tall before, sorry. And I look up and I see this view that I had never seen before either of the mountains, of people laughing and playing in the water. And I decided having fear right next to me that I would just take the absolute biggest bounce that I could and launch myself off like a rocket. Thank you very much.